Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Well, good evening with how dark it seems. Um, thank you for joining us today and a very warm welcome to this webinar, Post-16 Options for SEND Students in Kent and Medway. Um, as you will see with the people who have joined me at the top, um, the webinar will be led by Jackie Moran, um, Careers Advisor at MyTrust, and we will also be joined later on by Chris Target, Area Manager for CXK. And you can also see Kat Jameson there, who I will introduce in a, in a moment. Um, my name is Joni Chase and I work for the Kent and Medway Progression Federation, also known as KMPF. Um, before we go into the webinar itself, um, part of my job is to tell you about a few bits of housekeeping. So firstly, just to confirm um, that as audience members, you will have your webcams and mics switched off. I think we've probably all got used to working virtually by now, but what that means is that we won't be able to hear or see you throughout. Um, however, you can communicate with us or ask any questions throughout the webinar if you like. We will come to questions at the end, um, but if you want to write the question as they come to you, feel free to do so. So how you do this is by clicking on the red arrow on the top of the toolbox on your right hand side, um, and then press that will expand the box where the questions are. Please use this for any questions you have. Um, if you have any technical difficulties or audio as well, please feel free to pop the question in there and uh, either Kat or myself will try and rectify that as we go. Um, on that note, I just wanted to say thank you for Kat from My Trust uh, for hosting this webinar. Um, as some of you know, hopefully, um, you were involved in the webinar series last year and Kat worked on a project which involved the delivery of CIAG in schools um, for SEND students without EHCPs. Part of the project was to create the webinars and a conference in spring and both were really well attended and it was clear to Kat and I that this was an area of work where we need to continue. So my trust and KMPF and CXK um, are all part of the SEND Progression Partnership. It's a group of professionals working together to try and improve the education and progression opportunities for disabled students. Just a quick word here on terminology, as some of you may have noticed that in previous webinars we referred to the Disabled Learner Progression Network. And although disabled learners is a term used by the universities and students and ambassadors, feedback from the schools, who obviously we're trying to work with, very much said that SEND was a more familiar term. Hence, we became the SEND Progression Partnership and I won't go into all of them, but one of our key priorities for this year is to share information about the range of opportunities available in Kent and Medway. Um, we are going to continue as a partnership, often in webinars like this one throughout the year um, in 2021, and hopefully do another um, conference, cross everything for it to be face to face. Who knows yet? Um, if not, it will be virtual in the spring. Um, we have a number of ideas for webinar topics already based on feedback we've gathered across the year. Um, but part of the evaluation that will be sent out with after this webinar will also ask if there are any other topics that you would need to see to try and support your students in the different progression opportunities that are available to them. OK, so now I have the great pleasure of, of introducing Jackie Moran. Um, she, Jackie is the careers advisor, one of, um, with my, for My Trust Careers Service and delivers one-to-one -one guidance to students in every school setting, it seems, so pupil referral user, units, SEMH, I can't even say it, SEMH, SEN and mainstream schools across the South East. She has a wealth of experience and knowledge and has recently undertaken research to try and pull all this information together in one place about the different provision available. Finally, from me, just to say that this webinar will be recorded and made publicly available for you to watch again or share with colleagues. But now I'm sure you'll be pleased for me to say, Jackie, over to you. OK, thank you very much, Johnny, for that uh, introduction. As you said, I'm Jackie Moran. I'm the uh, career advisor for uh, my trust and I worked in all different type of scenarios. And today I'm just going to give you a brief uh, overview of what is the landscape in terms of uh, provision for SEND learners in Kent and Medway. Uh, by no means is this an exhaustive list, but I'll just give you some indications to show you the different pathways that, and provisions that currently exist. Next slide, please. Okay, the aim is to explore uh, 
And the, my agenda today is to first explore and see what, who are we talking about when we say send? And clearly send as a, as a category has had a big impact, this group, during the pandemic. I'm also going to look at the post-16 options, and I've tried to simplify it in three main pathways. Now, that is just a model I've used because I've found that using the rule of three with a lot of my learners, including myself, is an easier way to explain quite a complex and rich um, provision in Kent and Medway. Um, I also will give you some examples, as I said, they're not all, but some examples of what's happening in Medway and also in Kent. And also I'll highlight to you um, some of the national and local organizations where you can gather further information, download um, tools for your own practice, and also wonderful CPD to be up to date with this sector. Then my colleague Chris will show you a bit more in more detail the SEN mapping tool. I should say that please uh, do not uh, think you're going to miss any of the links. Um, the uh, PowerPoint will be uh, shared with you and all the um, uh, provisions that I um, have highlighted are in the SEN mapping uh, tool. Okay, so what's the difference? We do have this concept of SEN, is it SEN, S-E-N, is it SEN with a D? And what exactly does that mean? Well, SEN, SEN includes um, young people with special educational needs and disabilities. So you could have a disability, but not have a learning difficulty. You could have a disability and have a learning difficulty, or you could have a learning difficulty, but not have um, an EHCP plan. So you can see that this is quite a complex um, uh, area and it isn't just one group of young people. Now, the statistics are very alarming. SEN, people with SEN or young people with SEN are less likely to achieve qualifications, are, are more likely to be neat. There is a correlation between SEN and mental health problems and well-being a high correlation of homelessness and more likely to be represented in the criminal justice system. So as we see, young people with SEN face huge barriers to achieving their potential or the ultimate potential. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is a little bit looking at um, what, again, a little bit what are SEN learners and what do they look like and where can we find them? Well, most SEN learners, you will find them in mainstream education, but there is specific um, provision, particularly for those who struggle in mainstream um, education or have been excluded permanently from schools. And those are pupil referral units, young people who have been educated who might be student refusals, special schools, or sometimes a specialist section within a mainstream school. Um, as you will see in, in many of these schools, these are the, the alternative provision of schools, they uh, have a curriculum which is quite different than mainstream, they're using much smaller classes and have uh, maybe nurture rooms, have maybe special, specialist supporters supporting that young person depending on his need, that could be a language, speech and language therapist or even an occupational therapist. So it is quite different than mainstream schools. Next um, slide, please. As we can see, this is the SEND code of practice. I am not going to read it. It is, um, all schools have this, but basically you will see I've highlighted three, four main areas and you will have young people who have communication problems, Usually that comes, but not always, young people who are on the autistic spectrum or condition. Um, there are young people who have moderate to severe learning difficulties or specific learning difficulties. Those are young people who you call might have a spiky profile. And then you have those who have SEMH, which is social, emotional and mental health. And that could co-occur with someone on the autistic spectrum. 
And then you have physical needs, which is someone who's uh, visually impaired, hearing, multisensory, physical. But that person also could have communication, could have social emotional. So you can see it's not just one category, but it's co-occurring of groups. Uh, and a person could have many of these um, uh, challenges. Next slide, please. Right, this is just to illustrate the idea about the difference between how I see equality and versus equity. Equality is probably the minimum you could do in terms of supporting people in general. And equity is, is actually looking at the structural barriers. Those could be social, not just physical, including unconscious bias of maybe employers or volunteer, voluntary organizations in employing someone who um, is, uh, has been um, at, um, seen or as probably having send or send. Next um, slide, please. Okay, to simplify this, as I said, I, I used the concept of the rule of three. Uh, government also likes to use that concept quite a bit. Um, and I, I turned it into three pathways. Now, as you can see, the three circles overlap. So as we clearly see, it isn't just one size fits one group, one size fits the other group, and one size fits the other. They all overlap, and you may see one group progress to another pathway and to another, or a combination of pathways. But for the sake of this presentation, I've simplified it in three. Okay, so I've got pathway number one, which is those who are, are probably perhaps entry level. Um, they need maybe more support. And some of the pathways that you could find would be something like uh, supported internships or specialized uh, six forms or residential colleges. This group of people for the service, to access the services, they need to have an EHCP uh, plan. Then the next pathway, I call it pathway number two. Those are maybe young people who college isn't really for them. They're more a uh, hands-on student. Um, they might be more looking at a BTEC or, or apprenticeship type route. Um, and, they are, and this pathway is someone who wants to get into the world of work and, and needs just a little bit more of support, which they can have through access to work. I will go into more detail in terms of what's the difference between apprenticeships and traineeships. And the third pathway is full-time education. It's accessing mainstream services with support from um, the additional learning team or uh, access to work or DSA, which is the disability um, allowance that you get when you are in, at university. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so we're going to start now with pathway number one, and I'm going to look at more in detail of, of supported internships. And the idea of a supported internship is to um, probably get that young person who might be an entry level three, perhaps, lacks confidence in terms of the world or, or lacks experience in the world of work, but actually would and wants to work. Um, and they would have to have to access this type of service or provision, they would have to have an EHCP plan. I will afterwards spe spe uh, highlight um, the specialist six forms and the residential colleges, but not at the moment. So we're going to just look at the supported internships. Next slide, please. Right, this is kind of at, at a glance. What could happen if you referred someone to a supported internship? Now, this is from um, MENCAP. It's a very useful diagram from MENCAP, which also offers supported internships, which I have uh, in a, a, another slide, I have a link to it. But as you can see, you refer the person to a supported internship. They could, that could be a pathway to going into traineeship. The important thing about supported internships is that they would get a job coach. Now, that job coach not only will teach or show the person, they'll be trained obviously, uh, what is entitled in the job, but also will show them what are maybe the unwritten rules in a job, the social skills, the um, getting ready for work. 
Then that young person could go to a traineeship, also with support from access to work, then could go to paid employment or to an apprenticeship, which would be an intermediate into, uh, apprenticeship um, and so on. And then from their work. Okay, next um, slide, please. Right, so these are some, not all, of um, uh, agencies that are uh, providing supported um, internships. We have uh, a, a specialized um, provision in uh, Medway, which has teamed up with the education people to do a pilot um, scheme for uh, residents in Medway. And it's uh, what they call it supported employment. Now, actually, it's, it is actually a supported internship, but it has a, a lot on giving that young person uh, training uh, in the world, what you call employability skills. And in that, they would get work experience and a job coach. And from there, hopefully be able to either access uh, an apprenticeship or maybe paid work. Then you have BMEX, which also offers uh, supported internships. Uh, these, I should highlight, are for 17 to 24-year-olds. The other one is for 16 years old, so the uh, Medway. And again, you have to have an EHCP plan. Uh, they are based in... Um, I always get, I always pronounce incorrectly this, um, so I apologize for the people from Swanley um, or Medway, they're based there. I can see there's a spelling mistake, so that's my fault, <laughs> I shouldn't highlight that. <laughs> Anyhow, and um, if you want more information, um, you've got the information there. Uh, there, I do know students have used that service, they've actually done an entry level three, at a college, felt college was enough and gave them enough, um, I guess, theory, and then moved on to doing uh, a supported internship in a care home. And they absolutely loved it uh, because they felt much more independent. They felt like adults and they felt appreciated. And as you can see, the programs between six to one year and from there on, they could move on to uh, an apprenticeship. Then we have MENCAP, which is a national program. You would have to phone to that number or sign up and register um, your young person, or they can register themselves, and someone from the company would get back to you to see who is the local provider um, in uh, Medway or uh, Kent. Um, next slide, please. Right, these are slightly different. These are not supported internships. These are what you call study programs. Again, the type of young person that might be um, more interested in this type of uh, provision is a young person who may be going to school, wasn't found, they found it challenging or just didn't like it. Um, maybe they don't want to see the same people uh, that they saw at school at college. There's a lot of that happening and would rather just start in a different place. They might find challenging uh, big groups and noise. So these are actually quite um, small um, uh, provision with training. There is, um, I'll, and this is just an example, as I said, one is Catch 22, which is based in um, uh, Maidstone. They also uh, provide from functional skills all the way to um, a level three qualifications. They uh, do from that, they, you can access uh, traineeships, uh, which is always a gateway to intermediate apprenticeships. So I've put the details there. They have a whole list of different type of um, subjects, including, and also along with this, um, the, the young person will still be doing most likely functional skills in English and math. The next one is one which is um, called, um, they're called cyber engineers. Again, they predominantly um, cater for young people who are not accessing mainstream education. They uh, also provide um, traineeship with work experience 
in the industry the, and a lot of support in terms of employability skills. And the young person could come out with a level two certificate in cybersecurity and digital forensics. Um, this is a very, very popular uh, program and uh, hopefully they will continue funding this program. Um, there's also, they also could go into um, uh, intermediate apprenticeship and from there on, or maybe feel more confident to access college. I should also say that they're also doing um, computer maintenance, which seems to be a very popular um, area where young people want to train. And last but not least is physical folk. They predominantly work with young people who have e an EHCP plan, quite a few on the autistic spectrum. It's focused on 16 to 24 year olds. And it's really a lot of confidence building using drama and film projects to help that young person feel uh, confident and probably re-engage back into education. Okay, next slide, please. Right, again, same pathway. These are more study programs. Um, we have uh, squirrels, which is quite an interesting one. I know it very well. Squirrels is um, a school, a stable for horses, a riding school. And they have for 16 to 24 year olds, uh, an approved British society training center to help young people who are finding it difficult access or attend mainstream um, provision, uh, such as um, could be sixth forms or could be um, a college. They will get um, some form of equine um, learning and qualifications and along with maths and GCSEs, including if they needed and wanted to retake or take their GCSEs or functional skills. The main aim is again to provide confidence building training in working with stables and with animals and also learning how to relate with people who come and visit the stables. We've got another one, another provision called Super Jam. And that also is in Swanley and, and Canterbury. Um, they do, they can, the young person can get a diploma in rock school music diploma, functional skills in math and English. And also the other important thing is it's a, a small group with young people who are actually really keen uh, in the area of music, in the area of gigs. They help them in terms of uh, employability skills and going to real gigs. They then get their functional skills in math and English. And also, again, it's the whole thing of timekeeping, motivation and confidence. Or for, to access this program, you have to be between 16 and, and 19 plus if you have an EHCP plan. And uh, there's NACRO. NACRO, again, um, you can do from uh, entry level to GCSEs to BTEX, depends what, what path you're taking. But they do, again, it's small groups. Uh, they've got a lot of what I call more trade related uh, training. It's not like a college. It's more, it's more like the scenario going to work. The other interesting features that you can start at any time. So for young people who have who have been out of school for long or education for a long time, they can re-enter or this is a way of re-entering. And they do uh, give some form of reward if you do go to and you maintain your attendance. So there's some money reward there. OK, next um, slide, please. Again, more study programs. And um, we've got the famous uh, Princess Trust. But I always make sure to say Princess Trust, <laughs> sorry. And again, that is for young people between the ages of 16 to 30, living in Medway and Kent. I've actually put down the emails of the two people that deal with the area of, of Medway and Kent. Because um, as you know, the Princess Trust is a national program. They have um, anything from 
taster courses to training up to a level three qualifications. Um, they, um, the person can be leaving, living in Medway or in Kent, and some of the courses are for 16 to 18 year olds, some are for 18 to 24 year olds. So you, the most important thing is to get in touch with uh, Liane, Zara or Molly Ross and get yourself on their uh, mailing list and you'll be up to date with all their wonderful uh, provision. We also have RHTS that they have worked very closely with one of the schools I actually uh, am a career advisor for, an independent career advisor for, and that is Rivermead School. This is again an alternative provision for young people who are not confident in terms of going to college or unsure uh, what they want to do. It's very hands-on uh, provision. It's at an entry level and it's to explore areas of, um, in the areas of construction uh, and the construction industry. Um, so it's, uh, it's very small groups, very hands-on, and there's no more than six, I think, at a time. The next one is Be Yourself. Again, um, that is um, Medway based uh, and uh, it's through the Medway Youth Service. Um, they have uh, loads of training, including career guidance, CV writing workshops, how to apply online. They have, um, if, if those who have completed some of the course and are interested in, in pathways to construction, they can, will pay for their CSCS card, which is very important for those who want to uh, continue uh, into the construction industry. Uh, again, please sign up to them and you'll get further information and more detail of their courses. Next slide, please. Right, so now we're going to go to pathway um, number two, uh, which is more, again, in the area of work. Again, this pathway is mainstream, but for those young people who need extra support, you, they can and they are eligible for funding from Access to Work. Again, Access to Work, I, I just wanted to highlight um, at the end of my presentation, I have a link uh, from Amazing Apprenticeships with a small um, webinar, recorded webinar, explaining the link between a supported apprenticeships, supported traineeships and access to work. And basically access to work can give you a job coach or other um, areas of need that you might need. You might need someone maybe to record, uh, um, record or special software, or if it's a physical disability, something to do with the way your um, wheelchair, uh, if you're a wheelchair user, any, any adaptations, if you're hearing impaired, so they will sometimes give you um, uh, specialized hearing aids, etc. So it, it's very specific to the needs of that um, learner, which they would see as an employee, because it's we're now looking at the world of work. And this is um, uh, specifically for uh, traineeship and apprenticeships. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, as I said, um, in apprenticeships, and this is in general, this isn't just for uh, young people with SEN with or without EHCP plan. They can access apprenticeships from intermediate to advanced. As we know, it is earn while you learn. Um, and there are actually other discretionary funds um, in terms of uh, uh, supporting young people who are uh, deemed vulnerable or needs. I also should say that many providers have don't necessarily look at that the young person has GCSC 4 or above, which sometimes can be a barrier for young people to access uh, apprenticeships. They'll see um, they have lowered it to three or sometimes that looking just at a equivalent, which is a functional skills, or they can do those functional skills while they're training in their apprenticeship. So again, there's much more flexibility than what may be written or indicated. And that really is uh, uh, determined again by the employer and maybe someone advocating on behalf of that young person showing uh, what is their potential. Traineeship, 
um, that also under the new kickstart funding which you to find out more i think chris might have more information from cxk about that um that's still in the pipeline certainly your local job center will know about it um and, and the kickstart program is really another type of traineeship um and where the young person will be doing uh six months um training uh, or work experience, but there is a lot of support uh, in terms of their English, their math, and their employability skills. And the uh, uh, employer gets um, an incentive for then offering a job for that uh, trainee. Next slide, please. Right, so where can you get some of this information? Because it's a lot, it's a lot, and it's always changing. Um, so my main sources, and this isn't, as I said before, about accessing work ready programs locally. This is in the Kent and Medway area. If I know of a young person who is interested in the whole area of uh, childcare or health and social care, starting from childcare, I probably would um, use perhaps Parenta. I do know uh, with um, some of the young people I have worked with, they have successfully gained a place through Parenta, uh, done an intermediate apprenticeship. They did not meet the requirements of the GCSEs, but because they had done childcare um, experience, <clears throat> sorry, uh, and related training at school, um, that was used and with a very enthusiastic and passed the interview that um, provided the uh, training uh, the recruitment agency to put them forward for an apprenticeship and along with that support them with their math and English. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we have, uh, if you want to find out more about intermediate um, uh, apprenticeships, I also in Kent uh, and Medway and also traineeships, there are the links for uh, through Kent training and apprenticeships. I put the links there again, specifically for 16 to 24 year olds. You, there's a number that you can phone to um, find out more information. Um, and there, there's everything from again, all of these, uh, all of these provisions. We'll also look at functional skills if the young person doesn't have uh, GCSE English math and uh, English math. Uh, level um, grade four or above um, uh, and uh, have have them do um, functional skills or the equivalent. Um, okay, next slide, please. Okay, so now we're going to look at the pathway number three, which is um, full-time education, but not necessarily doing A-levels but doing a different pathway, an alternative, but equivalent to A-levels. This is for any young person, whether they have SEN, an EHCP plan, or none of the above. And, <coughs> sorry, getting a little bit dry here. And it can start from um, uh, a higher degree apprenticeships, degree apprenticeships, and also, some specialized um, national extended diplomas which some universities are offering which i will talk about in more, more specifically next slide next slide please okay so just to summarize just so we got the three ones so we've got pathway number one supported internships pathway number two work ready programs which hopefully lead to a job and pathway number three, full education, but not necessarily um, your standard uh, six form A level route. Okay, so now we're going to see the areas which overlap, this, which makes it a little bit complicated, this whole situation, but as you see, they overlap. So next slide, please. Right, so these are provisions which I would say overlap in the, those three pathways. And I'll start with Rivermead Partnership. Now, Rivermead Partnership is the sixth form for Rivermead School, but it is the sixth form also for any other young person in um, Medway or Maidstone who has an EHCP plan. Um, 
the details of how to um, actually register your interests and if you if the young person or their parents or carers want to see a virtual tour they will be doing one very soon um, they uh, have specialized groups they have over over 70 places um, they're based in Mid Kent College Maidstone and Medway and they uh, also not only support young people who are uh, on the autistic spectrum but also young people who have um, ADHD and also they've got a special group for those who have um, SEMH and it, the provision is for those um, uh, from 16 to 19 years old with an EHC plan, plan and they can cater for young people from entry level uh, to level three and above. Then we have, um, and as I said, so these are two examples of provisions that work in partnership. Um, we've got another uh, school stroke college, which is called Grange Park uh, College. This is their sixth form two, and they work in partnership with Mid Kent College also. They, um, I've got, I put the contact details, and they do have actually. Uh, a slideshow for those who want to see a bit more of what do they offer. This is also again for a, a young people, they've got like a, a, a first year where the young person maybe might not be confident to go into college and then there's like a gradual approach to either going to Mid Kent College, that is if they're interested in, the, in what is um, uh, their provision there, their subjects there, or if they're more interested in land-based studying, then again, a graduate approach to Hadlow College. So it's quite an interesting um, provision, very much bespoke and catered to um, the young person's needs and interest. Uh, next, um, next slide, sorry. Um, okay, now these are examples, and I put these two examples of specialized six forms. One is an academy and the other one is an independent sixth form. Uh, and uh, sometimes for some young people, going to college is just not exactly the right environment. Both of these provisions cater for uh, young people who are on the autistic spectrum and might have mild, uh, moderate or mild to moderate learning difficulties. Um, Bradfield College, um, uh, you there you will have and I do know of, pe of young people who have sat A levels or combination of A levels with BTEC um, and again their progression can be to college or to work or to an apprenticeship but one of the interesting features of, of Bradfield uh, Academy is that they have a progression to a supported internship once that young person is 19 years old that is if they are interested in doing that so they have a whole independent supported uh, internship which is absolutely growing and um, so if you wanted to know more about that for the supported internship you have to be 19 to 24 and have an EHCP plan that is open to other young people too not just for those who are uh, in uh, who have studied at Bradfields and then you have um, Blue Skies independent sixth form again it's a very small groups of, of young people, some, uh, sorry, of, group, of um, uh, study groups, sometimes just the three or four, depending on the interests of those young people. So it's very, very bespoke. You will have young people who have or could do A levels or at level three qualification, but because of their levels of anxiety, maybe mental health problems, and that they are on the autistic spectrum, fine accessing mainstream, uh, provision too too much so they do have internally their own college and that is for those who have finished their sixth form and can progress to 19 to a provision that they have for 19 to 25 year olds um, again it's very much bespoke to what that young person wants to do okay next slide please Right, so if you want to know a bit more about what, what is happening uh, and what is your local offer, I, I have not actually included everything, as you can see, 
Um, you either, if you live in Kent, you can go to and click at Kent Choices. I put the link there. Um, if you live in Medway, you can look at there's a specialized local offer for SEN. Then it, there's a section where it says post 16, and that will give you all the information you need. And if you have general queries um, in general, there is also a helpline from um, I, I ask information advice and support, and that they will also give you loads of information in terms of provision in in for post 16 uh, young people in the area of Kent. Okay, next slide, please. Right. So now we're going back. So I did a kind of a detour because I was doing the overlap of those, but now we're going back to full time, our last pathway which is full-time education. And again, that is either mainstream six forms where young people will be doing their A-levels, uh, but will need maybe additional support, uh, colleges, and if the young person is doing the vocational route, and uh, they could do, do also doing what will be coming out later on in September T uh, levels, which is a level three, qualification and it's um, equivalent to free A levels. Um, more to be, I won't talk about that today, but um, there's certainly a lot of information in the media about it. And then you have a specialized sixth form, which is your industry sixth form. The one in Medway is your waterfront UTC. I do know young people who have, have very high interest and ability in math and sciences and have applied and gained uh, a place there and they did have an EHCP plan. Then you've got then two universities in the Kent Medway area. Um, one is the University of the Creative Arts. They offer um, a national uh, diploma, uh, extended diploma, which is an equivalent to three A-levels. They're based in Rochester. Again, that is for any mainstream uh, person, a uh, young person, but I do know uh, three young people who have EHCP plans who applied to uh, study there and did get a place because uh, they were incredibly talented uh, artistically. And then you do have the University of Kent who also have their extended diploma this is more like a humanities stroke social sciences diploma. It's different than an A-level because it's more on, on mo modules. Um, it, I find it quite, quite interesting and exciting that you can do a combination between biology and chemistry, culture studies, English language, literature, and it is an equivalent to three A-levels. So it's a lot of pick and mix in the area of humanities and science and social sciences. Again, I put the link with further information and um, uh, um, and um, how do you apply and what are the, uh, what are the main features of the program. Okay, and now I think um, we're coming near to the end finally. <laughs> right, we have now the national and local organizations. These are just, I just picked a few where you can get wonderful free resources. One is there's free resources from the Korea and Enterprise Company, and I've put the link there. I certainly, there's loads and loads of free resources from Disability Rights UK. They've got wonderful webinars. They have a program particularly for young people young people with SEN and disabilities for young people with SEN and disabilities, wonderful initiative. And again, also, if any parent, care, social worker, teacher had any questions about education, they've got a hotline, a free hotline, helpline, which you can access. Then you've got UCAS, which has a whole lot of information about provision for SEN students. I won't go into the details there. And then this is a very specialized area because we sometimes forget about those who are um, um, visually impaired. This again is a national organization which supports students who are visually impaired. Um, loads of information, loads of webinars, um, including ad, uh, advocating for your young uh, learner. 
And last but not least, uh, Medway Parents and Carers Forum. Oh, sorry, here we go. <laughs> I'm nearly getting there. Um, which are, is a wonderful group to sign up to. I am going to jump a little bit my slides because as you can see, there is so much out there. So uh, next slide, this is things that you can, you will have access to this information. Next slide. Uh, just again, if you want more CPD, the education, uh, Kent Choices, uh, doing this wonderful webinar, series of webinars, a post-16 um, provision in Kent. So sign up to that. And yeah, and now we, I'm going to leave you with my wonderful creative colleague, <laughs> Chris Target, who's the senior manager let me get your title right oh dear i've lost your title see <laughs> you're too much talking today manager for careers at cxk i do apologize if i said your title the wrong way around <laughs> fantastic thank, thank you, you so much jackie for such a comprehensive overview <laughs> of uh, what's available and what's out there um there's a, there's so much there to, to look at and to consider so i'm sure it's been helpful uh, for those of um, everyone who's been watching and sort of taking a bit of a snapshot at what's out there. Um, in terms of my role, um, I'm the area manager for the career service at CXK for the school service, overseeing the uh, team of fabulous advisors that go out uh, providing um, independent careers guidance at a, a, cost of, a wealth of uh, different sorts of provision, ranging from the private sector through to grammar academies, um, SCND, SCMH, uh, PRUS, uh, study programs, some of those of which have been mentioned already, um, providing um, support that's out there. Um, I'm also uh, the current elected chair of the Careers Writers Association, uh, writing nationally and locally um, on matters relating to careers um, and developing resources that are available for young people, parents, carers um, and uh, teachers to make use of. Um, so I'm a bit of a careers geek is the best way to provide it. Um, as a part of our work, uh, we also do a lot of advocacy work and we also track changes and needs within the county. Um, a, a part of that work that we were doing um, as a partnership with um, other partners, including my, uh, my trust uh, with Katrina, who of course is um, helping to host this uh, wonderful event. Um, but also with the CEC and the DWP. One of the things that we noticed as a trend was that a lot of um, different schools and providers only seem to have a piece of the puzzle of terms of what's out there in terms of what's available. And as we spend our time going to lots of different schools, seeing lots of different uh, types of students and providers that are out there, one of the things that uh, stood out to us that we would go to one part of the county and would talk to one particular provider and they will have some information on the opportunities available to young people with SEND. We would go to another part of the county and they would have a different bit of information, but no one would have the whole picture as to what's available. Um, on the local offers, there's uh, some discrete information that's available um, and um, opportunities that are there but they didn't cover the whole picture. So we basically, we got together and in partnership, um, we launched last year, the SEND provision map. Um, as you can see on the screen there, that takes us to the CXK website, which is www.cxk.org. And if you look on the blog section, um, you will find information about this provision map. Now this provision map was put together um, as a way of where we can try and collect the information that's out there that doesn't fit neatly into the local offer that doesn't fit neatly into what's out there and you can click on a hyperlink within that document and it will take you to this um, cloud-based excel document where for us as educationalists whether you're a teacher whether you, you're a senko um, whether you're um, a youth worker uh, whatever capacity you find yourself in supporting young people with SEN you can add your piece of the puzzle to the broader picture so if we, or each of us, we add what we know. So for example, we've got what Jackie's provided us with today, a wealth of um, information that has been partly added onto this document where you can look up by different sorts of provider. You can look up by different sorts of need and also looking at social needs such as activities and clubs and other kinds of activities, not just those related to education that might help our young people. So for example, clubs and activities 
that cater for those young people in particular with SEN needs, but also uh, wiser organisations that you can access depending on what you're looking for. So what we're encouraging um, all of us to do, for all of us who work within this sphere of education and employability, is to add what we know. This is an open access cloud-based document where you can actually click into this and you can add information. So we're encouraging you, if there's information that you know and that you're aware of, of opportunities that can support young people, um, many of us are experts in our own areas, in the, our own geographical areas. We will have contact with clubs, we will have contact with organisations who may not appear on things like those local offer documents. This is where we can start to gather this information and put it into one central pot that we can all access. Now at the moment it's a very broad and um, a slightly rough and ready tool that we can use but what we're currently also doing um, within CXK is working in partnership with the uh, local education authorities, um, local providers and others to see what we can do to kind of bring this information together and to bring some of this information towards things like the local offers that are out there. There's an awful lot of work going on behind the scenes and it's going to take time to, for some of that work and some of those things to trickle through as we know for those of us that work in education. So in the meantime, please make use of this lovely document that we've got. Please, if there's things that you know of opportunities for young people that are missing, please add them. Because only by adding them, by pulling together our collective wisdom and our collective knowledge, will we then be able to start to help as many people as uh, possible, as many young people and their families as possible, which is what is driving us. Because we want to see um, those young people thrive and do well, and for all of us to have access to that information. So please have a look at the tool, make use of the tool, add to the tool, um, and um, hopefully we can help as many people as possible. Please also have a look on the CXK website. There is a wealth of resources and blogs um, and articles there to help you, including one um, on how to plan and a career programme that is also caters for those within the neurodiverse side of things. So please have a look at that as well. If you have any questions, you can always contact me at CXK. Um, on that note, though, I will take you back to Joni and to Katz. Here we go.